Hi, theft or misuse of this bag is a criminal offence. Penalties apply. <laughs> Bloody ripper. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah. Someone I forget where actually complained, and probably rightly so, that they've never seen a mailbag, an actual mailbag, on the mailbag. Well, now you have. This is a genuine Australia Post mailbag. It's huge, and <laughs> yes, it's a criminal offence to abuse it, apparently. Um, these are what Australia Post give you when you get an account and you whack all your mail in there. And um, they've got these hooks on here so that you can put them in like a big frame, like a freestanding frame on the floor, which they didn't give me, um, so that you can then just toss the stuff in there when it's full, whack it over your shoulder and take it to the post office. Or they come and pick it up. Whatever. I'm not using Australia Post anymore. I'm using DHL e-commerce. Much better. This one's going to be a complete tease. I keep finding unreleased scopes in my dumpster. I, it's just crazy. Um, I don't know what's going on here. So, yeah, it's a new Siglent. Hmm. Details coming soon. Sorry I haven't been doing mailbag in a while. Been very busy and no, it's not mailbag Monday anymore. I've scrapped that and fundamentals Friday, the actual days of the week. The videos are just released whenever. Um, this one is from Gurgly? I've got to be pronouncing that wrong. Anyway, um, Gurgly is from Hungary, I believe. Yes, hi to all my Hungarian viewers. Awesome. Um, please open before the 15th of March. It's the 15th of March. Sorry, um, I just, yeah, haven't <laughs> had time, so let's... Mailbag time sensitive. Yes, if you are going to send me Kickstarters or whatever, because um, you've got a crowdfunding campaign, then... Uh, Please mark it sensitive on the outside to ensure that I open it. Jeez, hang on. Foam. Bits. Bits. Tracer. That's a Raspberry Pi. A t-shirt. Oh, green. Jeez, I don't have green. I don't have a green shirt. A rather board. What's a rather board? Aquashield. Thanks for the shirt. we go. Check it out. The rather board prototype. It's a rather board. Oh yes. Um, it's a um, ruggedized. I think they emailed me about this. It's a ruggedized. The rather board from Hungary. Let's check it out. It's a ruggedized um, Raspberry Pi platform. I believe like a Raspberry Pi controller. But man, that is a schmick ruggedized case. They've gone to a lot of trouble to injection mold that presumably custom big like um automotive type interface connectors on um that looks really jazzy oh yeah it's built like a brick dunny let's check it out i'm feeling rather bored <coughs> get it <laughs> look at this puppy isn't this beautiful look at this case i love their uh logo too it's a sort of a uh take off of the uh raspberry pi um no pun intended because they're taking off the tracks Get it? <coughs> Jeez, I'm full of it today. Ratherboard.com. Uh, is it an actual prototype unit or is it... I don't know. Anyway, um, they've gone to the effort to... Look, injection mold this beautiful case and it somehow comes apart. Look at the O-ring seals all around here. Oh, oh, beautiful. Look at that. We've got a little... Uh, looks like a little Wi-Fi module, is it? And... Uh, Ooh, that just breaks off there. I'm not sure why they do that. Anyway, whoa, there's all the magic on the bottom. Because I was going to say, this is an industrial Raspberry Pi unit. Where is all the protection and stuff like that? The thing that's going to make it industrial is that all the I.O. is protected. Um, so there it all is on the bottom. I'm not sure what type of protection, probably, you know, current limiting, uh, protection, over voltage, uh, clamping, all that sort of jazz. Ugh, that's, that solder mask is brown. It's brown. I'm not sure if that's showing up adequately on, it might show up on the monitor, it's not showing up on the LCD. What the? The bottom is brown, and the top is red. What? 
Dear Dave, you are holding the Rutherboards developer package. We are a small group of friends from Hungary who thought a device like this could be useful for a lot of hobbyists and even software companies. Rutherboard project is our beloved child and we truly believe that it will make the life of hobbyists and professional companies easier. And well, blah, 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 blah. Indiegogo campaign will start second half of March. Yep, I checked. It hasn't started yet. It starts on the 24th or something like that. So, oh not going to hold off. Um, anyway, bookmark it um, if you want one. By the time the video will be available on our website, so check it out. Thank you very much. I don't think I should try and pronounce half of those except David. David. I hate, always hated David. Dave. Oh, look at that glossy promo shot designed to go outdoors. Um, and this is the one of the prime usage scenarios for it because it's completely waterproof uh, industrial grade Raspberry Pi motherboard system. Ah, oh, this is a great brochure. Wow. Hats off. A lot of work's gone into it. Um, that's, that is absolutely terrific. There's the system architecture for those playing along at home. We've got the user manual. It's only for me and the Raspberry Pi Foundation and for all my viewers, of course, playing along at home. And this looks absolutely awesome. Yes, it's got a GPS in it. We'll actually have a look. That's perfect for outside, uh, you know, or other mobile applications and stuff like that. So the GPS module we'll take a look at. Yep, onboard current limited output. So they've got uh, the driver transistors. You'll see them on the bottom there, probably all in there. Fantastic. Uh, what else have we got? So we've got a bunch of series resistors and expansion board header connector, stuff like that. It's got all the pinouts and uh, they have supplied various boards with this thing. I won't go 100% into all the details, but this is terrific. Uh, two 12-bit DACs. Is that on one of these expansion boards? No. Maybe. No, no, I just see a couple of uh, trannies or something like that on that one. Anyway, this is looking very cool bananas. There's the uh, GPS module down there. I'm not familiar with all the ones on the market for those playing along at home. Anyway, it's uh, just a little plug-in module like that. And yes, it hooks up to the Raspberry Pi and everything else, which we, they kindly supplied one, uh, Raspberry Pi model uh, Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, so that would just flip over and install like that. And they've got nicely a uh, USB on the bottom. I guess you could plug like an extra uh, USB um, doodad onto there or cable going out or whatever, I guess. Um, and then they've got the expansion header connector here, which you can plug in prototype boards and various like, I oh, won't call them shields there, you know, like um, little daughter boards that you can plug in there, and of course they've got uh, like current protected output uh, drivers, stuff like that. Curiously, that looks like a light sensor, and they did mention a light sensor in the manual. Why it's inside the case? It doesn't come out the case. Oh, oh sorry, it doesn't... They don't have a window on the case to... I guess um, it's to detect if you've actually opened the thing. So, yeah, I get like a tamper type thing. Looks like we've got a big ass poly switch down there in matching brown <laughs> for the win. Anyway, uh, all O ring uh, seal, rubber, well, it's not really O ring, rubber sealed um, all around the outside. And I don't know the name of these connectors. I'm, like, they look like, you know, automotive type. They're probably a standard one. People are probably uh, screaming at me. And I thought, geez, that's pretty uh, uh, useless until I realized that they actually give you a whole bunch of connectors with it. Um, yeah, there are no pins and stuff because they provide all the pin stuff. Awesome! Make your own cables. So this looks absolutely brilliant. Um, and I can't say I've seen anything like this. There's like, I think there's maybe like a a uh, like an industrial uh, protected I/O driver uh, shieldy hat, whatever you bloody call the things for the um, Raspberry. Pi that go on, but nothing this comprehensive that includes, you know, all the custom uh, enclosure designed for practically any uh, outdoor use whatsoever. Um, it is absolutely terrific. That guides in and goes in there on the guides. Uh, vibration. I mean, water's not going to be an issue. Vibration, probably once it's in there, it's going to be a 
It's going to be a Bobby Dazzler, I think. No worries whatsoever. But that, like, there's nothing on the market like that. That has to have a really good niche. The only thing I didn't see mentioned in there is any sort of, like, uh, battery option. Now, of course, you wouldn't uh, want a battery option to power the thing all the time because the Raspberry Pi is not exactly the most low-power thing on the market. It's a pretty high-power uh, processing and high-performance processing uh, platform. But, say, a battery backup or something like that. So I may have liked to have seen maybe some circuitry on there to interface and charge some, and correct me if I'm wrong, and it does actually have it, um, maybe an internal uh, rechargeable battery option or something like that, perhaps. And once you plug your Raspberry Pi in there, you do have uh, room for your cable in and stuff like that. Although, sadly, uh, Ethernet. How do you get Ethernet in and out of that if you wanted to? Um, yeah, probably would have been nice to see. Like, you can get waterproof Ethernet jacks, but they're, like, really custom, uh, you know, stuff and expensive and things like that. Um, but, yeah, probably would have been nice to use that. But I guess if you want to get Ethernet out of it, you've got the Wi-Fi. I mean, like, as in, like, if you want to network the thing, you've got the Wi-Fi. So, meh. One thing I do like is that it has uh, switching converters built on here for the 5 volts and 3.3 uh, logic as well. So the 5 volts, uh, it powers the Raspberry Pi. So you can feed in your uh, 12 volt power. In fact, it's uh, 7 volts, anywhere from 7 to 17 volts uh, power. And that switch mode power supply, presumably, uh, looks like it's capable of uh, a couple of amps, like the 2 amps plus uh, required for the Raspberry Pi, plus any additional circuitry so that's very nice aha uh -huh, that's the board with the uh, ADC DAC uh, thingamabob and once again red brown this disturbs me greatly I, I can't live in a world where this is possible and that's a nice touch they've uh, silk screened all the jumper options for the DAC uh, power there and also the ADC amp gain and stuff like that Right, I hooked up a 12 volt uh, plug pack to it, and yes, I know that I didn't use the uh, the waterproof grommety thing on there. Whatever. Um, uh, one thing I'm disappointed in: it lights up on the bottom, so everything's uh, hunky dory. We've got our 5 volts and 3.3 uh, volts, but um, if you just plug in the Raspberry Pi on its own, it does not power it through the header. So I, I find that somewhat disappointing. They did actually supply a short little USB cable, so you plug it into the USB under there, and then you've got to snake that over and, and plug that into your Pi before it can... there we go. It's on. Um, why? I see it power through the header, it's possible. So anyway, there's lots of exploring to be done with uh, something like this. It's got so many options with all the configuration with the I.O. And, and the module boards and everything else and the GPS. You can hook up and do all sorts of weird and wonderful things to it. But I don't think this has any parallel um, out there at the moment. So I'm not sure what the cost is. It didn't seem to be on the website at first glance. But that is implemented really well, really professional solution. So I'm very, very impressed with that. So if you want to check it out, ratherboard.com linked in down below. Sorry to person unknown in Australia. Hi to all my Aussie viewers. Um, local, uh, Ingleburn. Jeez, that's not, uh, that's not too far from me in the scheme of things. Um, so they've remained anonymous. Let's uh, see what they've sent in. This one's been sitting on, <laughs> on the floor. It's had stuff on top of it. I'm always out of space. You know how it's like. <laughs> Will it actually be a Robo-Made vacuum cleaner? It is a Robo-Made vacuum cleaner! <laughs> awesome! Um, that's got to be more than a two-minute teardown, surely. Thank you very much, Tom. Good on you, Tom. Please find and close my old robotic vacuum cleaner. I hope and make an interesting quick teardown. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Could be longer, therefore is not uh, useful, no longer useful in a cleaning brush due to it being sheared in two pieces during normal operation. Wow. Also included an old mobile phone. Oh, geez, that's tiny. Orange technology. MP4. Is that a phone? Wow. Yeah, I love collecting old mobile phones. Oh, look, it's a little... <laughs> look how tiny that is. Oh, my God. That is nuts. That's the tiniest little flip phone. 
I've ever seen. Hands up if you used one of those. <laughs> you don't still use it, surely. All right, let's check out the Robo Made very quickly, the auto vacuum cleaner. Um, yeah, this is like a rip off of the Roomba or whatever cheap ass thing. It's got a little bumper on there. Um, it's got, looks like optical, um, you know, optical ports around there. Uh, if you don't know how these things work, they, I believe, like this is the charging stand. These are little charging uh, contacts like this. And uh, you might think, well, how does it get all around the room, go around and all that sort of stuff, and then make its way back precisely to where it charges back up on these uh, pads here? Well, because, you know, like these have got, no these are reasonably nice little rubber feet and stuff like that on the uh, wheels here, but it's gonna like slip and stuff like that. So um, it can't just drive out, drive around the room for hours and hours and then come back to precisely the same spot because um, if you get any wheel slippage and stuff like that it wouldn't be um, accurate so it's actually got a little uh, like infrared type uh, uh, transmitter on here and it can uh, determine um, its location in the room and then come back so it can get roughly back to where it is so it's you know almost certainly tracking where it's going and stuff like that but to correct for all the accumulated errors and stuff like that it can um, navigate its way back like this and and go in and boom and recharge with the pads on the bottom there so yeah um what this thing is i don't know it looks like an additional uh transmitter it's got like a lens it's got a lens in there you can see that there we go it's got a um which basically gets a 360 that's a 360 degree lens so it's uh looking all around the room using that particular lens and there's another little so does it transmit out there and, and receives back i'm not uh, sure how that fits in the operation of the thing. Hmm. And that's powered from two D cell batteries. And uh, you'll notice that there is a matching lens on here. Here it is, 360 degree lens. You've probably seen these on uh, the back, the TV backlight teardown I did this. They did do this, shine a LED right angles off the board and then it reflects um, outwards like that to give you the nice even backlight pattern on your uh, the, you know, the back of your, uh, lead backlit LCD, but it can also be used to receive as well. Hi to all my German viewers. Thank you very much. Rene from M Munchen, something like that. <laughs> I got no idea. Sorry. Um, and let's take a look at it. It is vintage stuff. We love vintage stuff. So let's have a squares. What will it be? Vintage what? Transfile win. Oh, it's a HP 48. HP 48. Hands up if you have one. Still use one. A lot of people still use one. Um, uh, Serial cable. Windows serial cable. Beauty. And, oh, to go with it. You bloody ripper, it's the HP 48G. I lusted after one of these back in the day. I had the, um, I still still do, had the uh, HP 28S, um, which, how does that? Oh, this is like, I was gonna say, is this factory? Factory fresh? I don't know. Awesome, is there a note? I'm sending you a calculator for your collection I've used during my studies about 20 years ago at the time, one of the duck's guts. Yes, it was, uh, besides the TI-85. Rivalry fanboys. Um, during this time, I was really into it. After a few years, the shelf, the user interface, is so much out of date, not able to use it efficiently anymore. Yeah, going back to an... You know, you use old stuff like this, and then you're fantastic at it. Oh, it's in German. Fant <laughs> the manual's in German. Big thick manuals. No one likes makes manuals like that anymore. Ah. So thank you very much, Renee, for sending in this gorgeous condition HP 48G, 32K of RAM. Oh, the graphing calculator. Oh, Hewlett Packard. Here we go. 1993, is it? And the serial number for those playing along at home. And, oh, Reuben, powerful alkaline. <laughs> powerful toxic chemicals they're using in <laughs> jar
A <laughs> jar battery. Oh, goodness. Um, yeah, okay. Um, we've had on the mailbag before of the HP 48SX. This one uh, is 1989. This is four years later, 93. And I, I think from memory, because I used to be really into the uh, calculator community and stuff like that over at um, the HP Museum Forum. I was um, really big over there at uh, one time. I've dropped off in recent years. Sorry. Um, I think from memory, the 48G uh, wasn't as popular as the 48SX for some reason. Don't quote me on that. I could actually have it back to front. Everyone raved about the 48G and not about the 48 SX. Anyway, I'm not entirely sure. Someone can set me straight on that. I am sure they will. Let's tear it apart. Damn it! I just tried to get the thing open and I forgot. These are classically hard to open the 48 series and yeah, I don't think we actually opened the 48 SX either. Um, because they've got like heat stakes. Inside here, you've got to remove the battery terminals, you've got to drill out heat stakes, um, and then you, it's really a nasty piece of work doing this, and some people even get a heat gun and take off the front panel, and, and oh, it's you can drill out the heat stakes. No! HP and their bloody heat stakes. Um, I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. Bring myself to potentially ruin this gorgeous looking condition HP 48G. Oh. Oh, like, maybe I'll put up a poll. Should I, like, destroy it to do a teardown? I can do one of those YouTube poll things. Let me know. So let's turn this gorgeous thing on, shall we? Oh, we're in like Flynn. Look at that. Ah, oh, vectors. Oh, cross product, dot product. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, we can get into the equation library. Oh, columns and beams. <laughs> That's important. Electricity. Fluids, forces and energy, gases, heat transfer, magnetism, motion, all, all oscillations, all the sorts of stuff you need in physics. I think they advertise it on the front as like physics and chemistry. No, like engineering stuff. So, you know. Not a happy camper. <laughs> cool Ohm's law. Ohm's law and power. Voltage divider. Current divider. Wire resistance. Series parallel. All basic stuff. Capacitor energy. All that sort of goodness that you uh, needed back in, when when you're studying, of course. Um, so let's try the old voltage divider and see. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Thanks, Renee. Good on you, Bazza. Barry Shepherd from Potts Point has. Uh... I know a Barry Shepherd, I think. Seems a bell. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much from, uh, yes, Potts Point. Lenovo ThinkPad. Is it actually a ThinkPad? It may or may not be. People have a history of uh, sen not sending stuff in original boxes. How the hell do you open that? It says big knife. There you go. Big knife here and here. Instructions. Which I luckily eventually saw. There you go. Thank you very much, Bazza. And it could be. It looks like the real McCoy. Looks like we have a ThinkPad. Durant. No, what's, what's Durant? What? Is it an actual? No. Fujitsu. We've got a Fujitsu pouch in a Le Le Lenovo thingamabob. Ah. Oh. It's a Fujitsu tablety pad thing. Do they make um, what? Is it a custom job or is it like a, a uh, ruggedized um, the stylistic 500? Hands up if you had one. Bazza's sent in an early tablet here, um, a pen slash pen PC, littered with IO, PC, MCA, IR, VGA, PS2 keyboards, Centronics, serial port connections, all on a tablet. Wow. Um, it does power up, and yeah, not that interested, Windows 95 pen services. Um, it used Sony batteries in, used in the camcorder. That's interesting. Of historical interest, are they electromechanical counters? Um, yeah, I've... 
got the odd one of these um, in my old junk bin from like the 1970s. Uh, I remembered I had these counters when I saw your video on modifying a calculator to count the revolutions of a train around the track. And I thought, gee, that's a little complicated. An old counter would do. Yes, I couldn't find my counters. I was going to use one of these. I remembered I had them, but I couldn't find them. Um, they're somewhere, <laughs> like in some old past drawers or something. Uh, 48 volts DC, by the way. Uh, these were used on old telephone exchanges to record the number of calls costs. Each telephone line had one, so many thousands of devices in the big exchange. Wow! I had no idea. These were, um, and meter impulses would be sent across the line and cause the digiting. At the end of the month, the counters were used to work out the bill. The counters would be read manually initially directly, but later by taking photographs and then transcribing the numbers at a desk. <gasps> wow, look at that. Their photo got a hood and their film camera, none of this digital rubbish, to take a, a, a photograph of a whole bunch of them and then someone some poor schmuck at a desk had to sit down, look at the photos, and then uh, transcribe the numbers. Oh my, that is brilliant. Thank you very much, Bazaar. That's a brilliant bit of history. And for those playing along at home, the Lifebook Stylistic 500 Tablet PC, 6 DOS 6.2, brilliant. Windows for pen computing 1.0, oh my goodness. 486DX2 with a screaming 50 meg. Did you know, that's all right, 640 by 400 screen. <laughs> Backlit transmissive monochrome. <laughs> oh, this is, this is just gold. Let's take a look at it. Oh my goodness. The Stylistic 500. Um, the screen has seen better days. That is not a camera artifact. That is uh, what the screen genu genuinely looks like. <gasps> Just the bleeding on the liquid crystal. Ah, oh, wow, that is shocking. <laughs> Wonder if it'll eventually close. And of course you had your pen. You know, fantastic. You sign on the thing. Ah, oh, gold. Absolute gold. Looks like, yeah, they're the PCMCA uh, slots, external DC, all that sort of jazz. And they were the batteries, dual batteries, by the looks of it. And another port in there, hidden away. Thank you very much. And on the side, oh, it's brilliant. Serial VGA Centronics Parallel. Unbelievable. Made in Japan. All the best stuff's made in Japan. And we're in like Flynn, and you betcha we've got mod wires. Look at this. Beautiful. Ah, oh, look, I'll zoom in on that for all you mod wire fanboys. Fantastic. Going down the hole there. Thank you very much. Down onto the other uh, other side of the board. Very neat. Um, Always nice to leave a couple of holes on your board lying around so that you can snake uh, mod wires down to the other side of the board. Um, Yeah. 486. DX2 for all you Intel fanboys. Oh, it doesn't get any better. WDC controller, Cirrus Logic video chipset. I know there's lots of Cirrus Logic fanboys out there. And, well, not a huge amount more. It's all just laid bare. It's nicely designed. Um, all your power stuff around here, of course, your backup battery and everything else. But if you're wondering where all the memory was, well, it was hidden under this. Memory card! Ta-da! This is actually Centen Centennial Technologies Inc. DRAM memory card. I wonder how much it had on it. Does it tell us? Oh, 4 meg uh, DRAM on board, expandable to 20 megabytes using DRAM cards. 20 meg! How much did that cost you back in the day? Arm and a leg. CFL backlight is, well, stuck in there. Somehow that's your high voltage backlight. None of this lead backlight rubbish. That looks like a... Magnesium alloy uh, thing for the screen, um, but yeah, that's, oh, we saw on the bottom side here, here we go, there we go, we've got an extra board. What's that controller doing? Oh, that'd be the video controller. Actually, that puppy's uh, what's called a mobile GUI accelerator. Jeez, they don't make those anymore. So there's a lot of design effort that goes into uh, laying out a board like that, and well, <laughs> it was obviously, oh yeah, we've got some capacitors in there on the mod as well, I missed that before, oh yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, it was easier to do the mod wires in production because, you know, these wouldn't have been, you know, they're not selling a million of them or something like that. So it was easy to do the mod wires. There they are, poking up through the board and snaking off. Geez, they're going all over the shop, aren't they? Wow, what were they fixing there? But, uh, yeah, a lot of work's going into this. A lot of layers, a lot of blood, sweat and tears in that PCB layout. 
wonder if the person who did it's watching. If we take the screen apart, there's all our uh, uh, dispersion films and uh, whatnot. There we go, and there's the backlight, which um, it's got the faint and it's got the dots on it. Maybe you can see. I've done videos on these before. They're hard to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. You can see all the dots. That uh, helps disperse the uh, helps disperse the light evenly. So, oh, a backlight. Fujitsu, KC Limited. There you go. And uh, there's our reflective backing. There's our part of our driver circuitry there. And if we have a look at the screen, uh, wah, 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 wah. all the magic liquid crystals escaped. Hi. Anyway, there are our chip on flex drivers. That's actually a, that's actually silicon upside down. Flipped, d mounted directly on the membrane. That's how they do these. That's how they get the density. Oh, tripping man. I see fractals. Clunk, 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 clunk. <laughs> 48 volts AC, but I can just pulse it with the uh, uh, 32 volt uh, power supply and get it to advance. Beautiful. Oops, this one has Kickstarter on it. Ah. It might be expired. Uh, thank you very much, Adam Humphreys from Rose with a Y in the middle there. Uh, Rose City in Texas. Hi to all my Rose City Texan viewers. Um, let's see if this thing's uh, bigger than a bread box, because everything's bigger, bigger than a bread box in Texas, isn't it? It's in a little case. That's got to be a two minute teardown. Is that like a, like a pagery type thing? thought this was a Kickstarter. Could be. Oh yeah, Protean. We got a um, experimental uh, proto board. Love proto boards. What do we got? We got an old 3Com um, serial thingy in my bob card. Old ISA serial card. Wow, I remember those. Yeah, you got two uh, 8250 National Instruments uh, UARTs on it. Whole bunch of ancient PC cards. And an Epson color mono. Wow. Let's check out what Adam L. Humphreys has sent in. Thank you very much, Adam. 3Com uh, ESA Ethernet card, ISA parallel card, Epson ISA video card, whatever that does. Frontier Labs Next 2 digital audio player. <laughs> Classic. Uh, the 256 meg compact flash card ran about 100 bucks. Oh, good. Goodness. And the Kickstarter project, the Protean 2x8. Looks like it's something to do with a pinball driver. It's, uh, I it, hope it's a favorable replacement, generally large and non-customable, legacy compatible and costly, $100 plus pinball driver boards readily available. Uh, Kickstarter live on February 2nd and in March 13th. Oh! And I feel bad, he just didn't, almost reached his target, but didn't, and it was unsuccessful. Oh, sorry, Adam. Oh, but yeah, I've been too busy to do a mailbag until today. Anyway, damn it. I feel terrible. But let's have a look at the board. Oh, 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 it's got a micro on it. Look at this. Um, this is designed for um, uh, power MOSFETs to hook up to your microcontroller boards and stuff like that. And actually, you know, like a real world type interface uh, board. And that's really quite neat. Have we got some opto uh, coupler action happening there? So that's a Protean 8x2. That's worth having a couple of those in your kit, just in case, or at least one in your kit. No, two, so you've got one spare after you use one. Um, taken off this solder mask to uh, uh, have the uh, tin plate on there to increase the current handling capacity a little bit, as we've mentioned before. And you can see the isolation. Nice. N-channel, P-channel, uh, source. And it, that looks pretty groovy. I don't know about the absolute details of the infrastructure, but uh, yeah, it's worth having something like this around, you know, just to easily wire up N-channel MOSFETs and, well, NNP-channel, I guess, um, MOSFETs to your uh, products instead of, like, hacking them on a Vera board or something like that, you know, which is ugly. Um, like, a purpose design something like this can be, you know, just much neater. You put your opto-couplers on there, your, uh, like, your driver, pre-drivers, and then your output uh, transistors and your output connectors got different uh, spaced, different size holes. Absolutely Brilliant. I like that. Interesting. I don't think I've seen a specific driver uh, prototype board like that before. Worth having one in your kit. Worth having all you know, variants of these proto boards in your kit because you never know what you're going to need one day. 
And that's it. Protein. Protein. AdamLHumphreys.com. Check it out. Oh, yes, the Ezer bus. Anyone remember that? <laughs> it was like dual level. It was dual level. So it was compatible at the lower level or at the higher level or vice versa. I can't remember. Yeah, at the higher level and then the lower level deeper sockets were. It, it was it, quite an ingenious idea actually to make it sort of you know backward compatible with the isa the extended isa so the top ones i believe were like uh compatible with the 16-bit uh, isa bus and then you just snake the traces down and you had this extra depth connector in there which added all the extra lines in basically zero extra full footprint with total backward compatibility. So my hat's off to whoever designed the Ezer, but it never really caught on. You know, a few of the manufacturers started using it, and then, um, you know, PCI uh, took over completely. In I'm not sure how many years, but I don't think it was too long. Does anyone have any clue what that Epson board is from 1985? Hmm, made in Japan. And an old serial port board just for lols. So you can see how the ISA bus was compatible at the top level there, that top row, so if you take away that, it was actually uh, uh, completely compatible with it, and just added those extra ones at the bottom. Terrific. My goodness, is this MP3 player even worth tearing down? Ugh. And the TI DSP fanboys go wild, TMS320, blah blah blah, one of the one million variants, and that's pretty much all she wrote. Oh, classic RCA. Look at this. CD4016. Oh, and the old ceramic flat leaded package. I can't remember what the name for that was, but oh, wow. They don't make them like that anymore. Hi to all my Portuguese viewers. This one's from Serra Rita C. Cassina Caesar. That's a lot of names with it. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, from Portugal. Terrific. Let's have a squeeze at what we've got from Portugal. It's an old book. Phillips. I don't know what it is. You can see it before me. I don't know. What is it? It is. Hi, Dave. Here is a beautiful copy of that uh, that the internet has made obsolete these days. Thanks for your great content of your videos. Pedro. Pedro. Yes, that was not on the thing. Pedro. Thank you very much, Pedro. Wow, the Philips General Catalog 77. Oh, like, this is the, it's actually the General Catalog. It's got, let's have a look, everything. Before the interwebs came along, this is what you needed. The Philips General Catalog 1977 edition. Thank you very much. Pretty good nick, too. Um, and this had absolutely everything. You would have bookshelves upon bookshelves upon bookshelves upon bookshelves of all the data books and general catalogs like this for parts. It's the only place you could get your information. You could not get it anywhere else. The PDFs and the, uh, you know, and the web didn't come around until, like, the late 90s did they kick in. Anyway, this has, like, erectifier diodes. Thyristors, uh, Triax, and I just randomly flicked to this page and I thought it was brilliant. Look at this, um, a photoconductive devices, and it's just got a beautiful uh, diagram of the uh, spectrum, uh, the spectral emission versus uh, wavelength. Great stuff. I mean, uh, just like a photosensitive device, like it's just like it had pinouts and just general specs and stuff like that, and dimensions for the packages. This is what you need, a replacement guides for uh, transistors, device to be replaced, you know, and you used to have transistor replacement guides. Oh, wow, do I still have one here in the lab? I'm not sure, but it's got film caps. It's got variable caps, loudspeakers, loudspeakers, tuners for the old Philips TVs, black and white TVs, line output transformers, color TVs. <laughs> oh, oh, man, electromechanical, permanent magnet, all your ferrites. And all the uh, <laughs> the properties of your ferrites, valves, tu tubes, um, tubes. Oh, it's just it's just gold. What have we got there? Ooh. The storage towers of Eidenhoven's domestic water supply reflect the uh, modern thinking that goes into the entire scheme. Ooh, thank you very much for that. Beautiful. But that's how we did it back in the day before PDFs and the interwebs.
Oh yeah, we have Frantone. Everyone knows Fran Blanche. Uh, if you haven't, I'm I'll link in her channel down below. Awesome. She's got class. Look at this. Real mail. We've got space stamps. We've got a real airmail st um, stamp thingamabob. Oh, beautiful. What has she sent? Let's have a look. I think this is my uh, patron reward because I support Fran on uh, Patreon. Ta -da! It is a and uh, the uh, team oh team fran lab sorry i couldn't get the uh i've got i have to pin it on to old school terrific stickers and um team fran lab thanks dave fran beauty supporter on patreon and hi to all my patrons as well thank you very much hang on this is cool none of that uh safety pin rubbish no this is Newfangled, thank you very much. Magnets. It's beautiful. There's still a magnet in there somewhere. My member number two. Ha <laughs> ha. Suck on that. And we have a friend lab with the magnet and it's just beautiful. Look, New Horizons. Oh man, didn't that do beautifully? Punched well above its weight and Pluto turned out to be absolutely fascinating instead of like the frozen snowball everyone thought it would be it's one of the most interesting planets huh, 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 in the solar system catch you next time